Transforming objects is a basic feature in Affinity Designer, but this tool has some extra options that can make designing your projects even easier. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent, and today we're talking about the transform options in Affinity Designer. If you've used this tool for any amount of time, you're probably familiar with the basic options of resizing and scaling your objects and even rotating them too. But there's some additional features of this tool that can help speed up and add some flexibility to your workflow. Now to make sure we all start on the same page, let's just start with the basic example. So I'll draw a star here. And we can see the bounding box here shows the basic controls for transforming our object. We have the rotate option up here. And if we click and drag on these points on the side, we can resize our object. And in this case, I can hold shift to maintain the proportions. Some objects automatically maintain their proportions like artistic text and you have to hold shift to make it not be in proportion. But most objects you have to actually hold shift to keep the proportion. And if you notice it scales with respect to the opposite corner. So if I drag the top right, it's going to the bottom left. If I drag the middle right here, it's going to the left side and say the bottom right is going to the top left. Now if I want to have it scaled from the center of the object, I can hold control as I scale it. And I can hold shift also to maintain the proportions. And it will scale about the middle point. Now one option that's not too obvious is the ability to shear our objects. That means kind of slanting them to one side. And we can see that feature by just hovering outside the control points on the sides of our object. So we get these two arrows and I can drag sideways. I can also do it on the sides here, so I can shear up and down. Of course, it works on both sides. So that's a less obvious feature there that's pretty handy. Now, all those options are nice, but what happens when we want to transform our object an exact amount? For example, we want to rotate it an exact amount of degrees or move it an exact amount of pixels. Well, that's where the Transform tab comes in. And in my program, by default, it's here in the Transform tab. You may have to select it with Window Transform. So I'll drag this out here. And I'll click on my object, and now you can see the X and Y coordinates of my object and the width and height are specified, along with the rotation and shearing angle. Now, of course, I can type in values here. For example, if I want the X coordinate to change to 1500, I can do that to move it there. If I want the width to change to 1000, I can type that in here. Now, I have this link option checked. So that means they both changed with respect to each other. If I break the link, I can make them scale separately. So I've changed the height to 2000, but the width stayed at 1000. And we also have our rotation and our shearing options. Now, one of the interesting things about numeric fields and affinity programs is that they can use mathematical formulas. So for example, if I wanted to double the width here, I can type times two, and then I'll hit enter. And you can see it multiplied the dimensions times two. I could say divide by 10, makes it very small. I could say plus 500 and so on. So it's a very handy little calculating feature there. Now I can also click on the field name and drag it to change the value. Now by default, it's a little slow, but I can hold shift to do it faster. And I can hold control to actually make it really slow. Okay, so now the question you're probably wondering, what does this square here mean with all these sub squares on it? Well, there's actually two pieces of information on this square. One is the bold square, which tells us where our reference point is. And the other is the white square, which is telling us where our top left corner is. So let me set another reference point by clicking somewhere. So I'll click this top right corner. So you can see now the top right one is bold. And what's gonna happen now is if I rotate, you'll see I'm rotating around the top right corner of my square. Let me undo that. If I click the bottom left, now the bottom left one is bold. And if I rotate about that, you'll see I'm rotating around the bottom left point. So the bold square is determining which points on your bounding box the operation is being done to. Now the white square just permanently represents the top left corner of your object. So that's useful if I rotate my object totally sideways. So the white square is here. That's because the top left corner got rotated down this way. I can rotate it back to the original position. And you can see as I rotate it, the square keeps track of where the bounding box is. So the white square is just a reference point so we don't get disoriented. Now let's do an arbitrary shape just to show you how that will work. I'll just create something random here. Now I want to do this random shape just to kind of reiterate the concept of a bounding box. You can see my shape is very irregular, but ultimately there's a rectangle around it. So if I click the bottom right corner here and I rotate, you can see it's rotating around the point on the bounding box. So we can see how we can rotate around points on the bounding box, but what if we want to rotate around an arbitrary point that we decide? Well, that's where the concept of the origin point comes into play. So let me get a little bit of a simpler shape again. Let me do a star. I'll move the transform tab away. We won't be using it for this. 
Now by default, the origin point isn't visible, but it is this option up here, enable transform origin. So if I click on this, now you see there's this point in the middle of my object, and this is the origin. So actually what's happening by default when we rotate our objects is we're rotating around that point. So why does this matter? Well, we can actually move this point somewhere else. So for example, I can take this and I can drag it over here. So now the origin point is outside. Now if I rotate, you see it behaves much differently. I can move the point down here. I'm just clicking and dragging it and I can rotate it around there. And now if you want to reset the point, you can just click it and drag. And you can see in the center, there's a dot there that kind of tells me where the middle is. I'll just put it there in the middle position again. So here's another demo of some vectors. I have this spaceship here and I have a earth here. They're both just vectors, curves with some colors in them. What if I like the distance between these objects, but I want to move my ship in a different position around the planet? It'd be very tedious to kind of drag it and find the right angle again and do all this kind of stuff. So instead what I can do is I can transform the origin. So let me click on my ship here and I'll click this button again, enable transform origin. So what I'll do is I'll enable snapping just so the origin will snap to place and I'll drag the origin and I'll move it to the center of my planet here. You can see I get those guidelines. Now if I zoom out, when I rotate my ship, it's rotating around the planet. So it's a very easy way to have one object rotate about another. And by the way, you can hold the shift button to do it in increments. So I'm doing increments of 15 degrees here. Now one other interesting option is the point transform tool. And that's under the node option here. If you right click on node, you can select point transform tool. Now it looks a little intimidating, but what this is gonna let us do is choose the point that we want to rotate around the origin. So for example, if I wanna rotate around this point here, when I click and drag, I can rotate around that point. Or I can use this back point here if I want. So I don't use this one too much. I think it's useful if you're gonna have very mathematical operations, like in technical diagrams or something. But for the most part, I just do the basic rotation options. So I'll go back to my node tool and I'll just do that. Okay, now let's talk about transforming multiple objects at once. So for example, I have all these stars here. If I select all of them and then I just resize, you can see it's not quite doing what I want it to do. I wanna make the objects smaller, but I want them to stay in their same place. So for that, we can select this object here where it says transform objects separately. So I'm gonna click that. And when you click it, it selects one of your objects as a reference. And here, whatever I do to this object, it'll actually affect all the other objects that I have selected too. So you can see I'm resizing this one, but all of the objects in my selection are getting resized. If you don't like the object that it gave you to control, you can actually alt click on one of the other ones. So I'll click on this one. And here I can resize this one and it'll affect all of them. So maybe that one is more convenient for you in your design. You can also alt click on the layer menu here too. And choose it that way. Now it also works for rotation. So I'll select all these objects here. And again, I'll just enable transform objects separately. And if I rotate this one, you can see they're all rotating. I can resize also. So everything is being operated on, but around its own origin. Now, if you want to get really crazy, you could also transform the origin. So I'll do that. If I drag this out here, and if I rotate it. So now you can see they're all moving in a circle here. So it's quite a powerful tool for transforming multiple objects at once. Now, a very close cousin of the transform feature is the power duplicate tool. That allows you to easily put objects in a circle like this design here. If you wanna see how to do this, check out my video on the power duplicate tool. I'll put a link to it right here. If you have any questions about this video, of course, feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.